Hey there. I would like to keep doing little videos, not only of the good moments, but of the bad, but there's been too many good to not keep mentioning. So, and I do want to speak about this topic because I think we can get carried away with optimism. We can make all sorts of reasoning why things are happening. We're on the right path. But I do believe in uh, a theory of flow. And there's a great book, I'll put it in the notes of this video, that I think is great for anybody who's interested in the theory of flow. And it's not a self-helpy book, it's not the secret type book. It actually is kind of science book behind how when we're operating within you know, our best, uh, how do I say, like, when we're doing what we love and when we're on that right path, whatever that is, good things come to us almost like divine intervention, it seems like. And I, again, it's not, I will never be espousing secret type stuff uh, where if you just put it out there, it will come. I don't believe that. I believe if you make movement in your body, your physical body, even if it's millimeters, to somewhere new, fresh. And that's different than escaping somewhere because all your problems will follow you. This is more about stagnation, just like any body of water, anything. If it's stagnant in your blood, which is a big real problem in people who have chronic conditions like I do, blood not moving correctly. So anytime a pool of water, anything is stagnant, it gets toxic, it gets bad and you feel it and I was in that position before I left New Mexico and this isn't a commentary on New Mexico it's just commentary on being stuck and stuck as a result of many reasons my conditions of chronic illness were so flared up that it wasn't allowing me the movement now I was getting movement within my day being on the farm that I was working at uh, partially slash just living out of my tent but the the real movement towards getting more where I'm at today and that's why I want to do this video I'm at the ocean the ocean is free to all of us for me the ocean has been tremendous source of healing and that's not in a mind uh, psychological sense it's in a true physiological aspect so a lot of what you'll find me talking about later on will be things called negative ions and where are sources of negative ions. I'll just tell you right now, just being in the, the, the spray or the water vapor near the ocean, you're getting bombarded by more negative ions. And the word negative in this situation sounds bad. No, negative ions are good. You want negative ions to counteract, especially all of the electromagnetic fields, everything we're getting from when we're touching our phones and just things that are bouncing off us from the Wi-Fi, et cetera, et cetera. And this is something that's become so much more clear, not always in a positive way, as I've come to a city of chaos, cacophony of noises that are not the sounds that I had been used to, which were nature sounds. And you can see there's going to be a lot of branching off videos, but mainly what I want to speak about is from yesterday through today through other days but I just give you a couple stories I, I left a video yesterday about my experience you know I, I've been at a certain area I don't want to give exact location but in the area of Koreatown in Los Angeles and been utilizing a certain park that a lot of people who are homeless pushing around carts who have addictions just the community as well who have money and kids and and good things are using this park as well as people like myself who are homeless but I have a a car to at least give me some uh, respite from the elements and I'm one of the extremely fortunate people who are utilizing this free resource and something that we all need any city any place that you can participate in your local recreation areas that are public that allow people to use the bathroom which is just 
such a basic need, but is an amazing gift to people. To be able to wash their hands, to brush their teeth. And that's something that has been really tremendous for me. And yesterday, I've been there a few weeks, people are starting to recognize my nose stands out for sure. <laughs> they know who I am, bottom line. And, you know, I just do my thing. And that's, I always said I'd be the strange guy in the park when I'm old that's doing his exercises and everything. When I say strange, I mean in all the best eccentricities way, not in a, you know, creepy way. Just people sort of, hey, why is this person doing this? I've tried to not give any Fs about doing those practices that I do uh, for many years. But admittedly, it's been easier as I get older to just own it and go, hey, I'm gonna get barefoot. I'm gonna do my Qigong and I'm gonna feel the stairs. And sometimes those stairs turn into curiosity and turn into people that you can, you know, be that person that was was given to me in the previous, before I bumped into the eccentric guy at the park and I'd ask questions. I'd go up to him and be like, what are you doing? What do you eat? What is your life like? And I don't always take everything from that person, but I take a little bits. And whatever you take that works for you, you know, becomes maybe part of who you are later on in life. And that's where I'm finding myself now with these little bits of pieces of people, eccentric people and, and people who have lived alternative lifestyles that have sort of fused into a mosaic of what makes me this strange guy now. And yesterday in the evening, a gentleman came up to me and speaking Spanish and it's been great because my Spanish is coming back to me as I'm here, I'm losing my Portuguese. But, uh, and he said, hey, you know, we've seen you cooking, we saw you teaching uh, some of the kids here and some of the families what you're doing and my wife uh, wanted to, she went and made you these homemade tamales. And I was like, first I thought he was selling them to me. And I was like, look, yeah, no, I, I'm okay. I don't, I don't have the money. I mean, I didn't want to spend money outside of my food stamps budget. So, uh, no, he was like, no, we made them for you. And it was a huge bag. So I was like, is this like, you're giving me one? He's like, no man, Guatemalan tamales are not Mexican tamales. They're big, grande. So maybe he's making a point that I'm skinny. I am skinny right now and I'm trying to put on weight, but as my health improves, I hope my appetite will come back, but it hasn't come back tremendously yet. And it's been going on for a while now. I'm about 12 pounds under my normal weight. Nothing where I'm wasting away, but I'm usually a little bit heavier and I'll get there. I hope, but it was so touching for this person. And I just was telling him in Spanish, I'm okay please give to somebody else, but he really wanted me to have them and they were piping hot, so delicious, unbelievable. And I mean, I was just just accepting this from him. Tamales are gluten-free, by the way. Ooh. I don't eat a lot of corn, but I think all the love in this food, it filled me up. I feel so energetic today. And I just put my other cooking in Tupperwares. I was cooking some flash, flash frozen wild caught salmon, which is one of my staples. And I found the cheapest place to get them now, grocery outlet. The same wild caught salmon you're gonna get at Whole Foods that's super expensive, 50% or more cheaper, just FYI. Then um, I, I have that food for later and I have more tamales for later, but I'm gonna give these tamales to a couple of my fellow community members here that I know that need them more today. They're on ice and I'm excited to pass those on. And it's okay to accept a gift even if you don't need it is what I'm finding and making sure you share it. And it's almost an affront to somebody if you say no. So that's a lesson I've learning, I'm learning. And in addition, then today I said, I'm going to the beach tomorrow morning. I've had a long week of going to offices, getting stuff done for my voiceover career and everything else. And tomorrow I have a huge class uh, called a master class from 10 till four. And I need a day where I just do yoga, get in the ocean. So I drove down to a place that I come and I won't tell you exactly where, but 
there were some older gentlemen paddle boarding and coming in and as I was going to go pay the meter, which I try to find free parking, I need every dollar for my treatment. And I was about to go pay and the guy comes over, hey, what's your, you know, we start talking and we start talking surf and I start telling my story and he goes, here, here's parking till 10.30 p.m. It's all day. Would have cost me like 10 bucks. You need it, Give it gave it to me. And then we start talking more. He knows a lot of people with Lyme disease. So I pass on my website, my YouTube. Well, my website's not up yet, but I passed on my YouTube. My website will be coming. And we started talking more and he was such a nice man. We were talking about his survival of cancer and some other things. I'm gonna hopefully help him with a couple of stuff down the road. I already have something for him that I think is gonna help him a lot, but it was great. I can only say this, people who utilize the water and surfers, you don't have to be a surfer, I find them to be some of the most kind people in the world. And California just keeps surprising me. And he gave me another gift that I can't really speak to, but let's just say it's gonna help me for a while. And he didn't need to. And it's just, it's more information he gave me, but that is invaluable, especially when you're new to an area. And he's also going to look for a surfboard for me. Yeah. And like I said, I mean, you couldn't make this stuff up. Tamales, surfboards, paid parking. So that's all I think part of flow, being on the right path. And it's not, it seems like magic, but it's not magic. And if you're a believer in God, maybe it's God for you. For an atheist like me, I'm an envious atheist. That means I think it's tremendously helpful if you have religion. It's just the way my brain works is I don't. But I believe in myself and that I'm, I'm on the right path and that karmically, if you're putting out stuff, it comes back. Now, the, you're talking or listening to the same person that when you're gonna listen to other videos, I was like, fuck karma, fuck this. If karma worked, I, I wouldn't be so sick. I wouldn't be in so much pain. I wouldn't be alone. People wouldn't have abandoned me. It doesn't mean that I don't, I'm not allowed those down moments, but more examples in my life have been of what you put out there comes back to you in some form or another. But you also can die along the way of a horrible death from disease. It doesn't exclude that, but you can if you keep moving and get out of that stagnation you can end up possibly in cleaner waters and with that and that's what i is metaphorically i think i'm feeling legitimately in my body my water is clearing my everything is clearing up and it means i'm still having setbacks within the day but then i wake up on a day like today i had to come down here and sleep for another two hours in my car but here I am, energetic, and I'm gonna speak to that too. How can someone, why am I so positive? Um, I know I come off very positive and maybe obnoxiously so to some. It isn't always that way. And I also will say that when you have experienced the pain that I have, or that many of us have with chronic illness, when I'm talking severe physical pain, the type of pain where when we wake up and we pinch our skin to go, wow, it's less today. It feels amazing. I do it all the time. I'm like, today, there's almost no pain, almost none. And when your mind has been in this vice and through a fog for so many years and you, you don't even remember what it's like to speak clearly or to have cognition, to be access to your emotions, when you're released from this type of pain and you have energy in your cells, your battery is recharged, we're not manic. Some are, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not above people who have something like that. I'm just saying it may come off as manic. It may come off as false optimism. It's not, it's a euphoria. You're released from that pain and this euphoric feeling because you don't know when the crash is gonna happen. It doesn't mean you anticipate it and you want the crash and you're fulfilling that prophecy. It just means that you're going on a precedence. And for me, it's a 15 year precedence of 
This doesn't last long. Celebrate it. Enjoy it. Don't overdo it, but enjoy it. And I think that can extrapolate into everyone's lives, whether you're chronically ill, whether you ever experience illness. Appreciating the, the moments that are on a beach and it's free and the sun's out and you can go in that ocean, whatever that means for you. That might be going to the movies. That might be the forest. It might be skiing. Who knows? But when you can do that and you can just pause, you don't need money. You don't need, I mean, money helps, but you don't need anything but your health to feel kind of happy. And I'm no, you know, sometimes I, I told myself, I don't want to come up like some sort of like self-help guru guy or anything like that. I'm not. I'm just a regular dude who's had irregular experiences and I'm trying to learn from them and more speaking aloud instead of like, do this. Try this. It will work for you. Hell no. It works. It's working for me now, but I might come out with a different story later. And I think you find what works for you. And the biggest thing is if what you're doing now is not working, I think, and if it's keeping you in a stagnate period, any sort of change is going to be helpful, almost. And it's worth the risk to get uncomfortable because it's not comfortable to leave some spots whether it's near your family friends your workplace but nature is healing I believe that and this has become much more of a video that I, I didn't expect but I wanted to mainly talk about the gifts and the, the beautiful people who have helped me here and keeping um, de mentalidad abierto abierta Somebody correct my Spanish. Keeping an open mind, open mentality has brought me to a place that I feel like is going to turn my life around. And I'm cautiously optimistic. I hope you'll enjoy watching as things get better, but also stick with me if they do fall back. So thanks for following. Not every video is going to be this long. I know I can't keep people's attention span for that long. You might watch two minutes. You might watch one. But until I learn how to shorten my message to be more succinct, you got to bear with this. Or you don't. Just, just don't follow. <laughs> All right.